Hi ladies, welcome to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. If you've been looking for a little cheat code video on the internet that you can always revisit when you have an event coming up or whenever your beauty routine or self-care routine needs a bit of a boost, this video is for you. I am going to be giving you exactly what it says in the title. 10 tips to get gorgeous fast, get pretty quick, get hot in half time, do you hear me? Okay, I didn't want to just give you guys a dry, anemic little list. I wanted to get kind of in depth with it. So these tips are split into two parts and I really tried to break down each category. These tips will not only help you look amazing, but will also subtly give off this vibe that you take extra care of yourself. You can use all of these tips or you can pick and choose the ones you like the most. Plus, there will be some bonuses thrown throughout and at the end because we believe in generosity around here. If you need to remind someone that you're that chick or you need to remind yourself that you're that chick, baby, I got you. Let's get started. Tip number one is to do your nails. Doing your nails is one of the easiest, cheapest, and most instant ways to boost your appearance. You will hear this tip a lot from me, so I apologize in advance, but if you do your nails on the regular, you already understand this, or once you start doing it, you'll get why this is important. Doing your nails gives your entire appearance an overall pulled together, cohesive kind of look. You will look well kept and well taken care of, even on a day when you have happen to be in a very casual outfit like sweats you will look more like a put together person having a chill day than like a hobo there are so many ways to do your nails with or without extensions you can do a classic matching mani pedi on your natural nails at home for next to nothing you can also upgrade to a gel manicure for a glossier, longer lasting manicure. Press on nails have also made an incredible upgrade and comeback. Poly gels have been my jam for about the last year and a half. I bought all the tools and taught myself how to do it and my sets are flawless. Of course, acrylics are also a classic Depending on your skill level, all of these can be done at home, but if doing your nails yourself is not your thing or you want a version that's way more complicated than you're capable of, you can always go to the salon. The price range will vary depending on which services you get and whether you do them at home or get them done. If you don't like or can't wear nail polish, you can also always trim, shape, and buff your nails for an incredible shine and a neat look. As an added note, you can also grow out your natural nails if you like a longer look but not extensions. There is an entire community on YouTube with tips and techniques, oils, treatments, hardeners, all that good stuff to help you grow and maintain your natural nails. No matter which method you choose, remember to oil your cuticles. I recommend every other day, but at least squeeze it in there a couple of times a week because pretty nails with dry, dehydrated cuticles are just not a good look. Like it or not, we're all constantly picking up and giving off nonverbal signals to each other. Doing your nails gives this very subconscious signal that you take really good care of yourself. So coming in at number one, do your nails. Tip number two is to whiten those teeth. Even if your teeth aren't as straight as you want them to be yet, they can be white as heck starting now. There are so many affordable, effective ways to get there. First, there's whitening toothpaste. Toothpaste is already a grocery staple. It's something we're all already buying anyway, so we might as well get a whitening formula. Brush with that whitening toothpaste for the recommended twice a day for two minutes, and you should start seeing results in as little as three days. You can follow up with a whitening mouthwash to help move things along. For a real boost, look into an electric toothbrush if you're not already using one. And when you're ready to move to the next level, you can look into whitening strips, trays, or anything like that. To be honest, the trays and the lights are a little bit of a hassle for me, but I know there are people who swear by them and get great results. Personally, Crest White Strips have been holding me down for years. I revisit them about once a year, maybe every two years now, 
to keep my teeth sparkling and when I do that I'll use them for about a week. If you have a little extra money to burn and you don't want to be bothered with the strips or the trays and having to remember to do it daily, you can also get a whitening treatment like Zoom from your dentist or hygienist. That will run you somewhere between three and six hundred dollars so if the convenience of a one and done treatment is worth it to you that's definitely also an option all you need is a whitening toothpaste afterwards to maintain your new whiteness it's a really interesting feeling to be talking to someone and have them stop you mid-sentence to comment on how beautifully white your teeth are it's weird and flattering at the same time a little side note with whitening some people may experience a little sensitivity sensodyne toothpaste is amazing for this i found out about this from a friend who actually doesn't whiten her teeth but has just naturally always had sensitive teeth i accidentally fell asleep with my white strips on one night do not recommend and even though my teeth felt fine when i woke up every time i ate something hot or cold it was terrible so she recommended that to me and after brushing with the sensodyne the pain dulled instantly after the second time i brushed with it the sensitivity was completely gone i have kept a tube in my rotation ever since but regardless of all that point number two is make sure your teeth are white that's something you can start today and see results in two to five days tip number Number three is to smell delicious. There is almost no compliment like being told you smell so good as you walk by or give someone a hug or overhearing people talk about you saying she always smells so good. This really goes into that concept of signaling that you take extra care of yourself. It's one thing to not smell bad, you know, hopefully everyone is showering and using soap and deodorant. But it's a completely other thing to smell so good that people notice and comment on it. And there's so many options of what to do in this arena to smell great. Your basic hygiene is obviously the foundation here. We are not using fragrance to mask anything. We have to do the basic care. And then we can talk about the products you use in your hair. Your shampoo, your conditioner, your leave-in. We can talk about your body washes, your lotions. And then of course, we get to the crown jewels of smelling good body mists and perfumes as someone with a sizable perfume collection who loves both designer and niche I absolutely love and recommend body mists First of all, once in a while, you'll luck out and stumble across a body mist that performs just like a perfume. Not all the time, once in a while. And when you do, it's a steal. And then there are also times when you just don't want something super strong. In perfumes, I tend to prefer beast mode perfumes, thick, sweet, gourmandy type of things. So mists are clutch when I don't want to choke myself out or give myself a headache, particularly when working out or when going to bed. If you are allergic to or just don't enjoy traditional perfumes, there are actually also natural perfume brands whose focus are making perfumes less chemically, if I can say that, and as non-toxic as possible. You can also use fragrances naturally found in nature, something like Manoi oil, which I love, which is basically Tahitian flowers steeped in coconut oil for a certain amount of time before being strained and sometimes having vanilla added to it and being sold as is it's divine whatever you choose though tip number three is to smell delicious tip number four i'd say is to master your hair notice i didn't just say do your hair mastering your hair is about finding a flattering hairstyle hair length and hair color for you it can really be as simple as switching up your part or adding a little color or just doing a gloss treatment which is basically just a clear coat for your hair for just that extra health and shine highly recommend or it can be as dramatic 
as a completely new color or getting a major cut or adding some serious extensions. A lot of times when I try to explain hair being done versus hair being mastered, I like to use Rihanna as an example. When she first came on the scene, her team went with that popular marketable look, long loose waves with a nice caramelish color. Technically, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't the most flattering look for her. That jet black hair that would look harsh on some people actually makes her eyes pop more and the shorter lengths actually complement her face shape more. But I do think for her, the color was a way bigger issue than the length because even when you see her with jet black long hair, it looks great, way better than the long caramel colored hair. So this is just one more example of how just because something is popular doesn't mean it's right for you specifically. And of course, there are some women who do look better with long hair and long hair is usually more recommended for the masses of women because having short hair puts every inch of your face on display and highlights any asymmetry or quote unquote flaws in your face, which isn't the goal for most women, especially for women with sharper or more angular faces, longer hair can be more forgiving and especially serve as the perfect softening frame around the face. So regardless of how subtle or how dramatic the change is, finding the right hair for you will absolutely make a major difference in your look. You can do it today and look completely different by tomorrow. It's a one day one shot thing. Or you can gradually test things out and do a little in trial and error until you settle on your signature look. So tip number four, master your hair. Tip number five, ladies, mind your brows and lashes. I know so many women, maybe you do too, who say even on the days where I'm not doing makeup, I've got to put my brows on. Now, of course, we all know genetics play a huge part in the kind of brows or lashes that we have, but using a serum can still definitely help most people. Some products are are more like conditioner and by keeping the hairs moisturized and conditioned they're less likely to break and can thrive to their full potential then there are serums with specific ingredients that actually help them grow brands like Latisse and while I've used both Rapid Lash and Latisse at different points without negative effects there are pros and cons to these products some people also dye or tint their eyebrows weekly for a darker fuller effect Effect. Of course, there's always lash extensions and microblading, but that's on the more extra side. Right here, we're focusing on the easy, accessible things. But let me know if you want to see a top 10 list of extra beauty treatments, and I'll put that together as well. But tip number five is just to tend to your brows and lashes in a way that makes sense for you. That was the first half of this two-part Get Gorgeous Fast series. Make sure you check out part two to get the rest of the tips. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.